Hey everyone, it's uh, Tuesday, February 15th, and this is Draft Fit Office Hours. I'm Dave, and with me is Rahul, our lead success engineer, and we're going to answer some questions and talk to you guys if you got something on your mind, or maybe uh, show you how to do something, some tips and tricks or whatever. So uh, looks like we've got Carl. Good to see you, Carl and uh, Mohan. Pretty quiet out there today, guys. So y'all have our full attention, I guess. Um, if you have questions, put them in the, in the questions. Y'all know how it goes. Okay, Mohan is interested in two topics. Let's hear it. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit, Mohan? He says, I'm interested in two topics, text input. How do I check for an at sign and show a list of tagged users and two how to use react query okay any okay. ideas rahul uh for the first part i think conditional display would be the easiest way to do that uh it's gonna be a bit tricky but something that can be done we would have to try it out because we haven't really done this before um how do you use react query yeah, that's something that we can talk about and uh i have an app that actually shows how react query works um, i'm willing to share that and go over the basic concepts there for you mohan yeah let's see it okay it might take me a couple of minutes to find it that That's okay. um, for the text input, how do I check for an at sign and show a list of tagged users? Okay, so the showing a list of tagged users is going to be, um, it's going to depend a lot on how you have your back end set up and all that. But the first thing that came to my mind was using regex or something to, to search your text input for that at sign and then you know if you based on if it's if it finds the at sign then you're you know i mean i guess you're talking about something like twitter where if it recognizes an at sign then it pops up with like a little modal of options for different people so that's yeah that's i mean um that's a lot to go over in in this kind of format but um Essentially, yeah, you would need some way to parse the text and check for the at sign. That would be regex, or there may be a package out there that uh, like you can attach to some kind of input field in React Native that kind of does some of that heavy lifting for you, um, looking for that at sign. And um, but yeah, it's I mean. If that's what you're wanting to build, there's not much out of the box that's going to work with that. So you're talking about custom code um, to implement pretty much all of that. Uh, Mohan says, regex is familiar. I'm looking for a package. I was focusing on change text. Okay. Well, maybe we can take a minute later and uh, look to see if we can find a package that mm, looks like it might work that you could try out or something. Cool. Okay. What about you, Rahul? Did you find it? Um, yeah, I did. Okay. And um, what I'll do, Mohan, is I'll share my screen. And I'll show you what I've done and some basis of React Query itself. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And then I can show you what's up.
hopefully it's the right screen. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. So I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Let me increase the size a little bit. So we are back to our to-do app. And you know, this is the most common use case app that people build to highlight the functionalities of a platform like ours. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, Mohan, what I'll do is first I'll explain how I've set up my quit, uh, my endpoints and I have used React Query in them. So if you notice, here are my endpoints, and they all have one common one common thing between them is they all share this object to do's. And you can see here, I've made my object type, named it to do's, and this one is a get all to do's, so basically fetches all the list of to do's that I have. And the other object, uh, the other functionality here is the post endpoint in which I create a to-do. Whenever I add a to-do, I hit this endpoint. And this also shares the to-do's object type. Uh, the third one is an update one. That's in case I want to mark my to-do as done. And that's a patch request. And it does the same thing. It's sharing the to-do's object type. So this is what is important here. It's basically, if you want to update something, um, they all have to be under the same object type. So if I had, uh, for instance, this add to do, and I used a different object type, and I added to do, this get all to do's will not know if a to do was added or not. So the most important point here is basically if you want to maintain this uh, sync between them, you have to make sure that you have the same object type. And I'll demonstrate what's happening in my app now. So over here, I can add a to do. And when I hit add to do, what my add to do does is it hits the endpoint. And now when it hits the endpoint, React Query knows there was something added to this list. So this list is displayed through React Query, right? So it knows that there was something added to the list. So it refetches the list and shows you uh, what the current data is. So that's basically how object types work. And I'm just trying to see uh, if there are any questions related to that while I'm explaining. Mohan said on the React query, if in Airtable a particular field represents a variable on which I want to set an observer. Okay, so on in case of Airtable, for instance, it's basically going to be the same thing. So in Airtable, when you'll set up your endpoints, uh, you will have an endpoint that will display the data from your Airtable. And then you will have an endpoint that you want to add data to your Airtable. So those two things need to share the same object type. And once they do, so you have to make sure that you have the right roles as well. So I have this create role. That means I'm creating a new entry there, which tells React Query that, okay, there was something new created. Let me refresh the data back from Airtable or any, excuse me, any um, backend, you know, this is back in, like, you can use this on anything. It's not, like, tied to Airtable or Xano or any other backend. So that's the basis of React Query. And a useful idea here is to try to use object roles in places where you want this stuff to happen. Like, for instance, if you're logging in, that is only done once in your app. So you don't really need to have a role. You can have it. But you don't really need it because you know you're not updating anything, or you're not changing. Uh, once you've logged in, you're not really changing. You're only going to log out. So that's one point that I would share here. And um, so Mohan just followed up by saying, "But the endpoint will retrieve all fields unless I retrieve a particular field." So I would think I should set an object role on a particular field. 
I'm not quite clear on the use case here. Like, um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, like uh, maybe. Like, can you give me some more details on what you're trying to do here? So you you want to do it for one object or like one entry in your Airtable? Okay, so if there is a status field in a record and I want to change UX, <clears throat> sorry, I have a really bad throat today. You would, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, well, you would have a, I, I, you know, maybe Rahul knows better than me, but on that, when you're setting an object type, do you set a diff, you set a single object type for your model, right? So it's not like to do's and to do, right? It's not one ob one model for getting a collection and one model for a single instance, is it? Like, I, I'm, my understanding was like with a to do, you would just like, that would be your object model, right? To do whether you're grabbing a, a, a list of to do's or a single to do, it still matches with that object type, right? Yep, that's correct. So basically, they all have to share the same object type for this to work. Okay, because he's saying if there's a status field in a record and I want to change the UX on status change, I guess like, a, you know, sort of like what Carl's doing with the like button or something like that, I guess. Right, so it should work exactly the same way, right, Mohan? Because like once you make an update and you're showing that list from your endpoint, your endpoint would know that, okay, a change has been made and then it will automatically change the UX depending on the the conditional display that you're setting there, right? So I'm noticing like, I'm thinking that you have a conditional display to show more data depending on that on that record that you're changing, for instance, the status, right? So that's basically, it will know automatically once you make an update because your data will get refreshed and there will be a new value in your status that will change the data on DraftBit. As long as you have the, uh, as long as you have the object role set correct to the same type of object uh, role. Hey. Okay, um, I can hear your phone, Rahul. Is yeah, there a way sorry. to speed? That's okay. Is there a way to speed up React query? Seems like there's frequently up to one second delay. As Carl's asking, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure how to speed it up. I mean, there's a lot of factors involved there. There's the speed of your server, your backend. There's the amount of data that you're um requesting um so it might take time to gather that data before it sends it to your app and then there's the depending on the amount of data it might take longer to get to your app once the backend sends it to your app if it has a lot of data and then once it gets to your app it has to parse all the data so if you're sending a whole bunch of data then it has to parse all that first before it can you know start to display so there's a lot of different uh areas there where you could be experiencing slowdown. One second seems like a long time. Um, but as far as I know, React Query should be, since it operates on the front end and like updates independently, I think, like when it recognizes a change in your object type, I believe it updates your UI with that new data, like separately from sending it to your back end. So those kind of updates should be pretty quick as far as i understand what you have any thoughts rahul on that oh um, no i think what you what you just explained is how it functions so i'm not really sure why it takes it maybe it depends on your back end like how long it took to respond you can check that with your um uh, inside the network tab right so you can uh, like once you open your app then you can do an inspect and then look at the network tab to see how long does it take for your backend to respond to changes. Or you can Point. test it in like, a, um, you know, what's it called? 
I use Insomnia, but there's Postman. You know, you can uh, set up your API request in something like Postman and check to see, it, am I getting a better speed just, you know, outside of the app when I connect to it? And then that'll kind of help you narrow down where the bottleneck might be. Because usually when it's a time, you know, a delay like that, it's a you've got a bottleneck somewhere where the data is like, you've got too much data coming in or going out and it's like having to try to do too much. So, you know, I would suggest testing that endpoint outside of the app first to get an idea of like, is it still one second? If it is, then it's your back end, something to do with uh, you know, the delay. So, okay. Back end takes about 0 0.1 seconds. Okay. So that's good. And, makes me think it's then it's maybe you're sending too much data to your app at once like ideally you want to only send the data that you need and that that applies to your records also so for instance if you're like pulling a whole list of all of your posts or whatever right like you don't need every single field for your record in there, you might just need like the name and the or the title and like a little snippet or whatever. So like, uh, hold on, Carl is saying this case is like unlike the only data center is post ID and user ID. Okay, so, hmm. but when you do the when you test the same thing outside the app, it's real quick. I'm not sure. Sounds like, yeah, very fast. Okay. So then it might be the way you have things configured in your endpoints in the app. What you got any ideas, Rahul? Um, it's kind of hard not like, you know, just thinking about what's happening. Like, I think it would be easier if you can just look at the app and just test it. If you want, Carl, like, you, can, you can jump up and we can help debug it. Yeah. If you want, Carl, we'll bring you up. Okay. Sure. Okay. So uh, I had that a little bit. Oh, there we go. We got Carl. Cool. Hey. All right. Yeah, I think this should this should work. I'll share my screen. See any luck? Nope. <clears throat> I'm going to so I'm I'm on Brave on the uh, the Crowdcast, but Chrome uh -huh. and the other I'll try I'll try switching here. Yep. Go. So that's the delay. I mean, it's not, it's really not horrible. I, it's, it seems like it's just long enough where people might press it too much. I mean, it's not a huge, yeah. Problem. But that's you kind of what you would about. expect it to be almost instant, though, really. You know? Yeah. What this you, is the fastest I've, I've seen it actually. What are you calling? Are you just like posting to a, a single endpoint, like a true false or some kind of like wh what? The, what does that API call look like when you click that like button? Do we like?
So it only, yeah. So in this case, it only sends a proof ID um, and then the, it's from the auth user. Mm. And that's all that's sent. And then what kind of, what are you doing on the back end? You're not doing a bunch of stuff like trying to figure out which record to update. You know immediately which record and can it just- search, It does search all records. Um, there you go. That's a big thing. Yeah. But it, yeah. I mean, if, if Xano comes back and says it takes 0 0.0, the last one was 0 0.08 seconds. Still, I mean, searching through, I mean, I what you need to be doing is sending an ID of a record saying you need to be telling your back end like hey this is the like that i need to update and give it a, a an id and then just tell it to update you know on that i think we're in some kind of weird like <laughs> yeah oh here stop sharing there we go um that's your question okay so if i change it from basically querying all like records yeah, man, you need to instead of asking the, the server or the back end to do all that and certain because the more people you add to your app, the slower that stuff is going to be right. So yeah. you need to tell it, say, this is the like or this is the post or whatever, however you have it set up and tell it specifically. That way it doesn't have to do any searching. It can go directly to the record, update the record and then give you a response. OK, that'll be easy. Yeah, I can do that. I think so that you, will help a lot. So when you're when you've used uh, query React before, it's like it's almost up, update or almost instant. It's, it should be, yeah. I mean, it, you, like um, a second is too long, in my opinion. Like yeah. so, but I, I, you know, typically it's quick. So that's why I mean, you searching through all the records makes sense. Like that's a big bottleneck right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I saw, I was going to post a question about the query react not working on a single post compared to the post of feeds. Uh, but I just checked it and it looks like you probably got in and fixed it because it's working and I didn't do anything. So Thanks. I did not do anything. Whoever did that. Rahul, did you? Um, I messed around with it. Okay. To tell you honestly. All right. That was some good messing around then. Thank you, Rahul. All right, man. Is that, that helps you out? You're good to go? Yeah, I think that's, I was trying to think of other stuff um, since there's not a lot of people on, but I can think of anything. Which is All good. right, man. Well, we're here. If you come up with something, let us know. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. All right, man. And stick around, Carl, because we have something cool to show you that you would be using in your app as well. Yeah. And Mohan said, Carl and I could help each other out. Definitely. Like, we encourage all the people, all the community, the draft bidders to help each other. Um, helps us out and helps you guys out too because you know we can only get to so much stuff uh, during the day and so if you know an answer to, to a question in the community definitely help people out yeah and like showcase the cool stuff you've been doing in your apps because I know both of you have been like you know have some really good apps and you do some cool things that other users would love to find out about so Agreed. Too. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Carl, I saw you were using Ably, and uh, I've actually wanted to try playing around with Ably in DraftBit. I haven't gotten around to it, but um, maybe you could teach us a thing or two about using Ably uh, for messaging or whatever in your app. So, cool. Uh, okay. Carl says Ably is acceptable. Gotcha. Okay. Don't love it, but it works. Well, you know, sometimes works is better than perfect. So, yep. all right. So, you got something you want to show, Rahul, or anybody got any more well, questions? Yeah, please bring them on. You have uh, bright minds of Dave here. And Rahul, come on! Don't <laughs> don't sell yourself short. I, usually, people don't like you know have that opportunity. So, any other questions? Please bring them up. Otherwise, we have some content prepared. Uh, Carl said, "Might have asked this before, yeah. but have you guys 
used gitstream.io for feeds chat notification before i haven't have you Rahul? no carl and i know i asked i said that i would like you know try to investigate this more but honestly i haven't got the time yet but uh i would definitely try to do that chris i don't know if you Rahul, can you, sorry, uh, I cut myself short there because I had a question in the chat. Uh, so Rahul, can you show how you set the React Observer where you show, uh, added the to-do to display an ad? Okay, so there's no Observer here, uh, Mohan. So basically what's happening here is Observer has been set by React Query itself. So yeah. On my screen, I'm not doing anything special. Like I don't have a refetch hook or anything refetching. It's just I'm displaying a list through fetch. And just because that list shares the same object type with my add to do, what it does there is like React Query is smart enough to know something got created and it automatically does that. So you don't really need an observer if you have the right setup. Good. And to Carl's point about um, gitstream.io, I know that we're currently looking into maybe integrating one signal, which would be cool. That that has notifications, email, pub sub, which would handle chat and feeds and stuff like that. So that would be really cool. And hopefully we get something like that together. Okay, so Dave, do you have anything to show? Uh, I thought you had something prepared as well. Yeah, I can show, um, hold on here. Okay, so you can see that? Yes. Okay. So I was, um, I'm working on updating some of our starter screens and this is our restaurant starter um, screen. And what I did was I created this card here um, and I thought it might be cool to just show, I don't know if I'll build it right now, but I can step through and show you guys how I did this using our new uh, linear gradient. So. I've got a background image. Let me switch to draft view. I've got a background image. And then on inside that, I'm using a linear gradient. I don't know if you can tell, but it like fades from clear down to like the dark, the black where the text is. And so I, I threw together the image background and the linear gradient to give it this like faded down to dark and I can show you like we can, you can see now how the, the gradient is going, but um, I just have it set here to um, basically transparent and transparent and then a darker color to make like that gradient. There we go. And that looked really cool. Yeah, so I thought it was kind of cool that I was able to do that with just, you know, no code, all the built-in. We got the star rating and our text and everything. It's like everything all built in. But you could do cool things uh, with layering, you know, the image background and the linear uh, gradient. So anyway, I thought it was kind of cool. Figured I'd share it. Yeah, definitely that. That is like a good stylistic approach, you know, to stand out. Yeah, it's kind of trendy, you know, especially on these kind of apps where you have like a, it's mostly a photo and you want to kind of highlight your, like put some text over the top of the photo, makes it, uh, the text pop out a little bit more. So. Gradient. Uh, uh Oh, sorry. Mohan said gradient could also work for other objects on the image, like fave icon or only for tech. 
I mean, you could put anything inside the linear gradient. It's basically like a view that has, you know, styling options for the gradient. So it, it, you can throw anything you want inside of it, just like a view. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. That's, that's what I had. If you got something, uh, Rahul. Yeah, uh, I can I can share what uh, I've been working on today, and this is a work in progress. But also, um, how do I say it? Basically, we are releasing a new feature that was requested by a lot of users, and I thought one of the use cases of that feature would help a lot of people in the community. So I thought I'll create something that would be cool to show off, and I'm pretty sure a lot of our users would be using that. In their apps. Uh, let me see if I can show the screen here. There we go. I hope my screen uh, my screen is shared. Yes. Perfect. So uh, what I wanted to talk about is a new trigger that we have released. It's called the on screen focus trigger. So what that does is basically it helps you run a bunch of actions depending on like whenever your screen gets focused. Uh, uh, one of the most cool use cases with that is checking if you have an auth token and if that auth token is valid and then sending user to a home page. I think Woo-hoo. Carl would be, <laughs> <laughs> Carl would, yeah, I can't see the chat, but I'm sure Carl would yeah. be interested. He says, this. oh gosh, haha. <laughs> yeah, so, it's great. Uh, so let me first show you what it does and then I'll show you what I've done to implement that. So I'll go to my login screen and that's exactly what I thought would happen. But let me delete that and try this again. Mohan says, I have been doing that inline hook. Yeah, I think we actually went over that last traffic hours, how to do this um, with code, but now you should be able to do it without code. So ta-da. Exactly. Yeah, and with a little bit more functionality as well, right? So That's before right. what we were doing is like we were just checking if the user has an auth token, and if it did, then we would just send them to the home screen without actually knowing if the auth token is expired or not. So now what I'm doing here is basically I'm checking the auth token first to see if it's valid or not. If it is valid, then we'll let them go to the home screen. Otherwise, we'll just ask them to sign in again. Uh, so that's basically what uh, how the flow would be. So let me first try to sign in here and show what's happening. And I hope I have the right credentials. I think I do. So I log in. I go to the home screen. And now I have a valid auth token. Let me go back to the login screen again. I mean in the draft field. And now when I go to web preview, it's supposed to go to the login screen. But, okay, I think I showed this late, but it found out that there is a valid auth token and it sent me to the home screen. And just to see if I can change this on, on the fly here, by making some cool edits behind the scenes and go to the login screen again. And you can see there's a fetch error 403. So what I did behind the scenes was I messed up with the auth token to make it to add characters into it. And now the auth token was not valid anymore. So they just checked the auth token on the fly and they said, no, that's not valid. So they showed the login screen instead of the home screen. So that's basically the use case. Very and cool. I'll show you how you can actually do this in your app. And this is for Xano backend, but you can obviously do that for any backend who, you know, Chris, you will have an auth me endpoint in mostly all the backends as well, or you can create one. So um, the on-screen tri- focus trigger is available on the screen level. So I have the screen selected. I go to uh, the interactions tab, and then I have this on-screen focus. So what I do first is make an API request to my auth me endpoint. 
familiar to whoever is using Xano. Uh, the next step, what I do, so I'm saving this as verify. Next step, what I do is I extract the message. So whenever there is an error, uh, Xano returns a message inside the response, which shows that there was an error in your login. So you can't really log in. I mean, like there was an error in your auth mean. We don't have a valid auth token. So that's where I extract that message. And then what I do is add a conditional stop. So if there was an error, I won't let this progress any further. They would, the user would just stay on the login screen. This is a familiar action stack if you have implemented authentication in your app. And if that conditional stop doesn't occur, we would just navigate to the home screen. Again, with no code, thanks to our engineers, basically, that we were able to release this so fast. And ta-da. So again, this is something that I've just created today. If you try it out in your app, and if you find that there are any problems or bugs with this implementation, we would love to know that. So and, uh, Roku, um, Mohan is asking, can you show the API action again? And uh, to Carl's asking if it's available now or soon. I don't think it's av available yet. I think it's currently behind a feature flag. Uh, but sh is that right, Rahul? Uh, I I'm, I'm, che I'm, can... checking, I'm checking in a user account and I don't see it yet. So I don't think it's... Oh, okay. Yeah, then it might be a teaser then rather than a demo. That yeah. you know, this is something that you would be able to do pretty soon once this Yeah, I think released. this week, I think by the end of this week, it's supposed to be uh, rolled out. So you'll you'll definitely hear about it, Carl. We'll, we'll make an announcement. So yeah, uh, for Mohan, this is the setup. So Zano, <laughs> uh if you want, to see what it returns, <clears throat> you can have something similar returned from. Uh, so basically, you can do that. At, do this with any endpoint, right? Once you know what is the uh, what is a valid response and what's a bad response. So right now, I'm getting a bad response because the token that I've saved is not a valid token. And uh, <coughs> the way I could show that somehow would be uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, Zano Mohan so let me see if I can quickly show this to you so there we go so because my token is expired I get this response back from uh, Zano that error code access denied and there's an unsupported input, or this message could be anything, right? It could be like token is invalid or anything. We are not checking the message. We are just saying we are just checking if there is a message key inside the object that is returned. So that's the flow of the app. And that's basically what I decided to showcase. Um, so thanks Rahul. That was awesome. Uh, um, Carl's asking, oh, actually Mohan asked, uh, how I would use this with Firebase since it's not a REST API, but a bundled service. Do you have any ideas? I'm not really sure. I mean, technically, you know, like we don't do a bunch much Firebase support at this point. Like we've removed uh, the ability for users to add it to new projects. Um, we were having all kinds of problems with it and w we didn't have it implemented fully. So people were expecting to be able to do more with it. Um, so, uh, but I'm not sure, maybe Rahul, you have an idea? I don't know. Um, I would have to look at the calls that you're making when you do a sign up and log in and uh, basically see what response Firebase sends you back. And depending on that response, um, I would do the exact same flow. So I know like on a successful sign up, uh, Firebase does return an auth token. Um, and then 
Like, if it is not returning that odds token. Wait. I'm not sure how would you, you would verify. Yeah, uh, sorry, Mohan. I think this is a slightly different use case, right? Because we are hitting the auth me endpoint here, not the login endpoint. So, yeah. Uh, I'm trying. I, it's been a while since I've used the login with Firebase. I, their eight, their um, you know, package might handle that kind of stuff. It does a whole lot. Like it, you know, once um, it behind the scenes, the Firebase packages do a bunch. So they might already look for, like, is do I have? Am I authorized? And do I need to update? I, it's been a long time, so, so I can't remember. I believe it does. So I'm not sure how to use Focus with it. Like, I'm not sure you would need Focus with Firebase. Is what I'm saying. I think it might automatically. Yeah. Like I, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer, but it's been a while since I've used Auth with Firebase. Um, Carl, random question: Any plan to show what features are currently being worked? on upcoming on the roadmap looks like it's just request and change log right now so you mean like in this context like uh demo the stuff that we're that are upcoming that we're working on carl um yeah that's that's a good point um we probably should update some that are like in progress and we also have some quite frankly that say they're in progress that have hit blocking issues like the maps um it's i don't i don't wouldn't consider it in progress at this point more like under review again um so but um you know we're trying to take some time during these to show off a little bit of like new stuff but yeah, I agree. Roadmap needs to be updated some and uh, yeah. True. Carl said it'd be cool to see that stuff, especially since you guys uh, get lots of questions about it for sure. Yeah, we'll try to follow up more on that stuff and keep it updated so you guys have a better idea of what we're working on. I'd also like to start posting like in our weekly what's new post um not just like new features that we've added but also improvements and bug fixes and and you know that kind of stuff too so hopefully that'll also help people figure out like what's going on what's new what's fixed everything all right um any other questions? Let's see. Um, Carl, do you think it's better to use error messages as app variables or screen variables? I haven't encountered this yet, but if an app variable is set to true upon failed endpoint request and then not reset, could it be triggered on another screen? Um, yeah, I think it probably could. I personally, prefer yeah having my error messages or any kind of messaging from an api request have it isolated to that screen where that request is um personally like so uh not everybody can do that right now because screen variables i guess carl you have access to screen variables right now Okay, cool. Yeah, Carl, is, I guess, has early access to screen variables. So yeah, Carl, use um, screen variables in that context, unless it's something that you need to be able to reference from other screens. And then in which case, depending on how you're using that app or device variable. Um, okay, so Mohan says, do you guys know if Xano or some other package you support allows SMS or email link off. Uh, I know that Firebase does, but I don't know how that would be set up in DraftBit. I know that mm -hmm. I think I think Superbase also has um, email link, like Magic Link 
off. Yeah, <laughs> Zano yeah. also does that too, and it yeah, supports okay. it out of the box, as uh, Carl said. But the only problem there was uh, the linking back to the app. Uh, is, all right, well, deep linking. We need deep linking. If we only had deep linking. <laughs> okay, so we're work, we're working on deep linking. Full disclosure. So Carl wanted some uh, inside info. We're working on deep linking. And Carl, if you're interested in helping beta test that, or Mohan, if you're interested in beta testing, you can send an email to Georgia. I'll put it in the chat here. You could send an email to George and he will put you on a, on the link. Okay. And uh, to Mohan's point, one of his uh, chat messages was how did Carl get early access to screen variables is basically Carl was a part of a cohort, <coughs> sorry, which we allowed, uh, which we gave early access to those people who were part of that cohort, right? Yeah. So, and that cohort basically did exactly what you asked in your next chat, chat message. It's like they let people demo their apps, what have, whatever they have made in a live stream. Uh, we have a bunch of users who start building their app or are in the middle of completing their app. And we try to give them more help to get their apps to the finishing point. Uh, we did that a few months ago. I'm not sure if there would be another one coming up, but I would love to participate in one as well and help our users to accelerate their, um, their production. Yes. Great. Uh, yeah, I got busy in reading uh, one of the comments from Carl. Carl says, Sean at Xano had a couple notes about using passwordless slash sms sign in here was my note brian also says these are usually used to pass more metadata like slack sending stuff about getting an account set up if you're not sending metadata in that login it might be more work than it's worth um i agree yeah i mean unless you have a specific use case for passwordless sms sign in just let people use their email and password Carl said the Notion office hours notes are coming in handy. Good. Yeah, I think the office hours thing is great. Like, I'm glad lots of companies are doing it. I think it's really helpful and good to engage, you know, users. So Mohan said our base uh, does not want email based. So uh, then sounds like that would be one of those particular use cases where you would want passwordless. Um, you know, there's different ways you can go about doing it, but um, I haven't played around with it in DraftBit, so Rahul might know more than I do. Yeah, I think I'll come back to that same point. Like you can do that phone uh, verification, right? So you can have an OTP sent from your backend yes, yes. to your mobile phone like a password yep and then you can just add that password on your screen and like a phone or number. whatever it is that you send it over and then the app checks you know has a form to put that info in and then you check it on your back end to make sure it's the same mohan said um i have spent a lot of time with firebase but firebase for sms needs recapture which uh, was hard to do in my early experience with DraftBit. I, I know that, no, I, I tried I tried helping you debug that, and that was, trust me, that was like something. But I think uh, deep linking might help there as well, right? So mm -hmm. one of the reasons we couldn't do that was because we didn't have a way to send people back to the app. So yep. I would just hold up. With deep linking, linking, you should be able to have a link in your email, you know, that then launches the person's app straight from that link. So you were working on direct uh, linking right now. Yes, we are. And any ETA, um, not specifically, but soon, 
I know that like some of our recent issues actually that we've been having um, around icons, I think specifically as a result of the deep linking work that we're doing. So um, it's close. We've got a, a small group of beta testers checking it out, um, helping us, you know, tie up loose ends. So if you're interested, again, hit up George and get on the list and cool. Will do. All right. All right. Anybody, anything else? You guys got any more questions? I think we're about out of stuff to say. So, unless you guys want a quick demo on Flex, that's it for me. Thanks for the great office hours. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate you coming. Definitely, Carl. <laughs> That's all for me too. Okay, cool. Everybody seems happy. Stick that in your cap for next time, uh, Rahul, and we'll roll that mm -hmm. out, let you do that. So anything else you, you want to say or, you know? No, I think I'm good. Uh, it was a pleasant office hours with our, the users that we see every day. So it's always good to talk to them. Definitely. Mohan is asking us the next one on Thursday. Yes, Thursdays is george and david and i believe that's at 11 a.m uh, but double check and then tuesdays me and rahul at one so cool all right y'all take care